So guys, now that we have here our microservice created, now we need to start implementing our business logic. Remember, this is customer microservice. So the first thing maybe that we need to do is to create our domain, our entity, the class that we are going to use in order to persist our customers. So in that order, let me create here a new package. Let's call it by domain package. So having here the domain, let me create the first class, which will be the customer. So what we are going to have in the customer class. So in the customer class, we are going to have the name, um, maybe, yes, the first name, the last name, the email address and birth date. Yeah, that is, this is what we are going to have in our customer object. So let's start adding here, for example, private string, uh, let's call it by first name. then the, la the last name and the next thing that we need also is the birth date and we need also the email address so having here our properties set so we have the first name last name birth date and email address. Now maybe we need to generate the getters and setters. So I'm going to use the Lombok annotations. For me, I like to use the Lombok because it's clear, okay? And with annotation, it's simple. So now that we have here the getters and setters and maybe uh, we need also uh, no args constructor. The next thing that we need in order to allow us, in order to make this class uh, persistable, we need to add here at entity, which is the JPA. Before it used to be from Javax Persistence, but now with Spring Framework 6 and Spring Boot 3, it's Jakarta Persistence, it's not ja Javax anymore. So remember, we are using the Spring Boot 3 and Spring Framework 6. As we can see here, the customer is complaining because it needs an ID, because we are creating here, it, it will be a table, so a table needs an ID, so let's add it. So as we know, we need also to annotate it as ID using the Jakarta one, and in my case, let me just use here the generate value. So this is what we have. The next thing that we need to do in order to persist this class is to create a repository. For those who understand Spring Boot, we need also here a repository. So let me just create here a new package. Now that we have the package, let me create an interface and let's call it by customer repository. The customer repository should extend one of the interfaces of a Spring Data JPA, in our case will be the JPA repository. We use the customer, which is the object that we want to persist and the type of its ID. And now let's just use here the correct Spring stereotype. So now that we have our repository, uh, we need to create service. So let's just create here another package. Now let's create the interface service, okay, customer service. And the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to create a method which will allow us to create the customer. it will receive a customer. So this is very simple one. And now let's create an implementation for this service. 
So the customer service implementation should implement the customer service. Let's implement the methods. Let's use here the correct spring stereotype. In our case, will be service. So now that we have service, in order to persist our customer that we are going to receive, we need the repository. So in that order, we need to inject the repository into service. So I'm going to use the Lombok annotation and So this is the way that I'm injecting the customer repository into customer service implementation. So this is the way that I have here. And the next thing maybe that we need to do is for simplicity, let's just persist the customer that we are receiving here using the repository method save. So it receives, it receives a customer, it saves and it returns a customer. So this is very simple use case. And now the next thing that we need is to create, for example, the controller. But before going there, I want to tell you guys about something. When we talk about microservices, we know that there are some best practices to follow. And one of them is domain-driven design. So I don't want to focus too much on domain driven design but from my perspective i want to follow the best practices when i'm starting a new project when i'm learning the new technology so as we can see here guys this is an anti-pattern having our customer object like that because this is the domain object Okay, this is the core of our application. We have the customer microservice and this is the core of our application, the customer. And what we have here, we have an object which doesn't have any other kind of logic, no validation, nothing. It's just a bunch of getters and setters and some um, Jakarta uh, or JPA annotations and nothing else. Okay, and this is what some people call by anemic domain. So when I talk about anemic domain, the first reference that we can have is Martin Fowler, which is a very experienced software developer, engineer, which uh, talk too much about anemic domain model. And it's not, it's, not, it's not the only one. So what is anemic domain model? So, an anemic domain model is the, the kind of object as we have in here is a domain object that has not behaviors and business logic. Okay. Objects like that, most of the case, the business logic is placed in the service or some utilities classes. So as we can see here, let me just show once again. Here in our IntelliJ, we have the, this anemic model. This anemic model doesn't have anything, no validations, no business logic, nothing at all. If you want to create a customer, we are relying on a service, okay, like this. So coming back here, we can see that most of the case, these entities anemic, they just contain the, the data. Uh, and the connections to other entities, right? And as we can see here in the definition, it just, it just has more like getters and setters and nothing else, okay? If we want to create a new customer, we are relying on a service. If we want to validate any customer, let's suppose our customer here, in this case, is an entity which is anemic, all the business logic is into a service or utility class or helpers. And we persist that into database using, for example, our repository, which in our case is the data access object. So the dynamic domain model, most of the case, as we can see, doesn't follow the really principle of object-oriented programming. 
okay? The object should contain behavior, okay? The business logic should remain in the object, in our domain object. So that's the reason I'm trying to tell you guys that when you are learning microservice and you are learning, for example, using and you are implementing the microservices uh, architecture using the domain driven design, you have to think about the domain. The domain is the core of your application. So that's the reason that we are not going to follow this approach using the anemic domain model. Instead, we are going to see another thing.